Hey, it's Dave Wyman, time for Football 101. Let's do the last draft choice of the 2021 draft, a guy named Stone Forsyth. Awesome name, right? Uh, out of Florida, 40 games he played in college, 28 starts, six foot eight, 307 pounds, six foot eight. And that's a, that's a pretty tall player. There's not a lot of these guys around, but I'll tell you what, he's an offensive tackle, played left offensive tackle, so he'll be a project for the Seahawks and maybe work behind Dwayne Brown and, and learn a few things. But, you know, the, it's, you're starting to see more taller guys. I mean, you know, I know for quarterbacks, there's a formula where you can be too tall. The really tall quarterbacks aren't typically very good. But, um, you know, for, for these guys, it's all about leverage in the NFL. It's all about the low man wins. So that's what's going to be a challenge for him. But, you know, you look at the, the Rams have two, their two tackles, Rob Havenstein and Andrew Whitworth, 6'8 and 6'7. The Seahawks also went and got a guy named Greg Island in the uh, free agency period afterwards out of Mississippi State. Six foot eight, so he's a big tall guy um, also. So it's gonna be a challenge for those guys. I wrote down here, Russell won't be able to see. He can't see over these guys, right? <laughs> it's ridiculous because Aaron Rodgers wouldn't be able to see over him either. So what you do, you know, as a quarterback, you find throwing lanes. So, you know, that, that whole notion is, is pretty silly. And I think Pete answered that in the very beginning when he drafted Russell. You know, he asked a quarterback, well, what, what did you do when you couldn't see? And he said, I moved in the pocket, and he said, exactly, that's what happened. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's not really a thing. Um, but uh, this guy is gonna be, it's gonna be a challenge for him. Here's what, uh, they traded up, here's how, they, how highly they thought of him. They traded up in uh, nine spots in the sixth round. They had two picks left from a trade that they did prior, because they really only had three picks in this draft. So they drafted the two that they'd gotten in an earlier trade and to get up to this spot, which was, uh, he was the number 208th pick in the, in the draft. So um, here's a couple of the pros. He's got really good hands and, and that's a good thing. You know, you talk about Walter Jones, one of the best of all time. You look at Dwayne Brown, same thing. It's their feet and their hands. Those are the two things. And I've always told young kids like juggle. If you learn how to juggle, it's your brain telling your hands what to do over and over again. The other thing is jump rope. <laughs> I used to jump rope all the time. It's the same thing, brain telling your feet what to do over and over and over again. You look at the really good tackles, great hands, great feet. So he's got good hands. The other thing is, he, what they say in the industry, he looks for work. And we'll see a play where when he's not blocking somebody and he can you know, slide off and pick somebody up and knock them, knock them down to the ground, he'll do that. The cons, the tough spots for him uh, are going to be, first of all, his feet. He's just going to have to get those going. He's a big guy. I don't want to say he's plodding because he, you know, he's kind of a plotter. You know, his feet are heavy, but they're, they're okay. They just have to get a lot better. And then he's going to constantly battle leverage. He's going to have to get his hips down, his knees bent, and get down under the, the opponents that he played. We'll take a look at... Um, he had a really good game against Georgia. There was a guy named Aziz Ojolari that got drafted in the second round, and he kind of shut him down. So we'll look at a play from that. And then just show you an example of what looking for work means. Well, let's take a look at it on film. All right, let's take a look at him here. Stone Forsyth, number 72 right there. And again, this is Aziz Ojolari, who uh, was drafted in the second round, the number 50 pick for the, uh, the New York Giants. So, you know, he's a really good player, and, and Forsyth pretty much shut him down. Uh, you can see, you know, he's, he's got a little bit of struggle bending at the hips there. You know, you look at number 76, how he's got his butt down. I mean, that's just going to be one of those things that he's going to have to battle probably uh, his entire career, but you know, he's got great size and he can use that to his advantage. So here he is, I mean, he's kind of straight up and down. And you know, that again, you gotta work on that. But what, what's happening right here, he's really good with his hands. He, right off the, the jump, when Ojolari comes off the ball, he gets a, a good quick pop to his chest. And here's what you see is, Ojolari is a great shot of him. He's knocking down Forsyth's arm right here. And that's something that D linemen are taught to do because a lot of times when you get hit, you've got your arm out, you get hit, you're gonna you know, lunge forward or you're gonna get turned or whatever. And he does a really good job of getting his, it's his left hand, it gets knocked down and he gets it back up again. And so that's the thing with his hands that are really good. Um, again, the feet, 
You know, need, gonna need some work. The, the leverage gonna need some work, but that, that hand fighting right there is really important. He did a great job with that. And here you can see he's just finishing the play right here. This is Kyle Trask, who was a, a candidate for the, um, the Heisman Trophy. But uh, yeah, he just did a good job of sealing him off and finishing the play. And a lot of times, you know, one of the problems with young guys is they don't finish a play and he's finishing it off right here really nicely. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at him just looking for work is what we call it. So you're gonna get, uh, he's got a guy lined up over the, the top of him. Here he is right here, guy from Vanderbilt. He's gonna end up rushing inside. These guys are both gonna drop off and you know, he's not gonna have anybody to block. So once he recognizes that, so these guys have bailed out of here. Look at the, uh, you know, this, this defensive lineman has engaged with the guard right there and Forsyth comes over and just got a little bit of nasty and him, knocks him down to the ground. And the other thing is sometimes if you do do this as a lineman, watch out for the guy looping around because once you commit, you can't get back around, but I saw several times where he plays the little stunt game really well. So if his guy goes inside, He'll push him off to the next guy and look for the other guy coming around. When everything disappears in front of you as an offensive tackle, that means something is coming back around. There's a stunt that the D-line is running. So, and I, know, I didn't see him get burned on that. I'm sure he had at some point during college, but the stuff I saw, he looked really good. And there is just, uh, you get a, a huge brownie points for the coaches, uh, from the coaches in film when you see a guy, looks like he's about to go to sleep down there on the ground. So really like that part of it, but just gonna be a continuing process. I think he's gonna be learning under one of the best in Dwayne Brown and keep your eye on Stone Forsythe. It's gonna be a couple years about uh, out before he gets good. It's gonna kind of be like the Mariners, you know? You're waiting for a couple seasons later for this guy to develop and I think he will. So we'll see what happens with him and how his height, whether it works for him or against him. But, you know, this guy's a, a pretty good, nice looking player.